Hello, and welcome to Lecture 8. Today, we're going to learn how to create a decision-making program. You might ask, why is it that your program needs to make decisions? What can I use it for? Well, I will say that almost all useful programs will be making some kind of decision. When you play a video game, you need to decide which monster you just shot. When you're typing a password, you need to decide if it's the correct password. Basically, looking at it from a different perspective, we all make decisions every day. Decisions like, who should I go out with? Which card do I want? With so many decisions, how do we deal with them? Especially doing it on a computer language. Well, let's go through the process together. If we take the previous car example, which car should we pick? How do we decide which car should we buy? Let's see. We can make some criteria, I guess. For example, if the color of the car is red, I'll buy the car. Or else I don't buy the car. Or we can say, if the price of the car is cheap, I'll buy the car. Or else I don't buy the car. Easy enough? Unfortunately, life is not always this easy. Sometimes we need to make more than one reason to buy a car. If the color of the car is red and the price is cheap, I'll buy the car. Or else I don't buy the car. Other times we're just desperate to get a car. So any reason would do. If the price is cheap or if I can impress that cute girl over there, I'll buy the car. Or else I don't buy the car. As you can see, there are many ways to make decisions. In real life, we kind of figure it out in our head. But how do we make decisions in computer languages? Well, it's kind of the same. If I were to translate what we just said about the car into Python, it would look almost identical. If we take the first example in Python, I will write if color is equal to red, I would say that I buy the car and print it out on the screen. Or else, I don't buy the car. It looks pretty much the same, doesn't it? I want you to notice the indentation with the if statement, just like functions we've done before. Everything that's indented will be inside the if statement. So let me make this into an actual program by telling the computer what language I'm using. This means I won't buy the car if it's blue. When we run the program, it will print out I don't buy the car. But if the color was originally red, then we'll print out I'll buy the car. To start off, I'm going to make the car blue. Okay, if we run the program now, it will print I don't buy the car. Obviously, since the color is not red, I'm not buying the car. So, let's run the program. See how it says that I won't buy the car? Now, if I go back to the program and make the color equal to red, if I run the program now, it will say I'll buy the car. Let's run the program. I guess now I'm buying the car. We can add more conditions. Now, in order to buy a car, just like before, we need it to be red and cheap. So now the statement will go something like this. If the color is equal to red and the price is equal to cheap, then print out, I will buy the car. Or else, print out, I don't buy the car. Now, if I set the price to be expensive. So when we run the program, it will say, I don't buy the car. Let's run the program. We're now not buying the car because it's too expensive. So if we make it cheap, then we will end up buying the car. Now, let me change the statement one more time. 
What if I were to say if price is less than five thousand dollars, then I would buy the car, or else no car buying today. This means that anything that's less than five thousand dollars, I will buy the car. So if, if I set the price to six thousand dollars, obviously we'll print out I won't buy the car. If I set the price below five thousand, I'll end up buying the car. This is all pretty easy and self-explanatory. I think you got the idea. With this kind of stuff, I think the best way to learn is to just check out a lot of examples. It would get really boring if I go over every combination with you. So be sure to check out the files I, I have included. In the files, I will give you many, many examples of how we make decisions. Learning these skills will improve your programming capability enormously. In this lecture, we haven't done any real application that makes decisions. But that's because we will spend the next several lectures doing so. So don't worry about it. In the next lecture, we're going to build a password checker. If the password is correct, we'll change the color of the button. Sounds exciting? You betcha. Today we change the color. Tomorrow we change the world. For your homework, I want you to go through all the examples in the text to make sure you understand them. This is mainly because we're going to use them in the next class. If you do your homework, you won't be picking your nose saying how confused you are. Well, we'll end the class early today. This is Che. See you next time.